Skip Sabian said, I look forward to seeing that. Nigga, I look forward to seeing you and everybody in this segment walking out the door for the last time never to be seen again. <laughs> I'm liking the women's division, especially New Japan, because now um, they're getting actual firepower. Plus, plus they're actually wrestling. Actually. Best friends still employed. Troy Perretta still employed. Chuck Taylor still employed. Dan Housen still fucking employed. Get him out of here. This is ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous is this. This is. Where is the logic in this? Where is the logic? So, somebody find it, and when you find it, give it to Tony Khan! Let's open Radio Rock Break. Hey guys, Carbonator here, and today we're Back with another episode of Life's Opening Radio Rope Break. I almost said Certified Bangers. I just recorded Certified Bangers, which will come out by the time you hear this. Um, I'll make sure of that. It won't be late like last week, and neither will this, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I've got my co host, Ben, Ch- my assistant host, Ben Charles. And uh, our guest host, Josh Jenkins, um, the host of Life's Opening Radio. Um, and yeah, um, Ben, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, this is me. I'm Ben. Um, I'm back on the show. Um, I can't wait for this uh, big time show. And this is, uh, you know, the Ro- our Royal Rumble review actually got a considerable amount of views. So in oh. a way... I feel like this is going to uh, exceed that because today we're going to review the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, which as of today is today is the 25th of uh, February. Uh, this was last Saturday, the 18th, yeah. for the pay-per-view. So it's going to be a big time show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it literally happened a week ago. Uh, so, uh, Josh, would you like to introduce yourself? Not that I need to, but sure. Uh, yes, I am the uh, guest host. Uh, I am no, no longer the main co-host for various different reasons. And one of these days, one of these days, I swear to God, that Winnie the Pooh that's on the ceiling will eventually drop down. It it, it will land. One of these days, it, it will land. Uh, oh, and Ben, um, I bet you didn't expect me to say that. Uh, and Ben, um, I would argue that the Royal Rumble is more prestigious than the Elimination Chamber in terms of uh, sure. importance. So that's correct. I agree with you on that sentiment. I thought the Elimination Chamber for this for this uh, premier, for this pay per view, I, I feel like the Elimination Chamber is a C level pay per view. I don't know why, but it is what it is. I it I, su- I I suppose B plus. Yeah. I suppose. See, um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at most, an A minus it would get from me. Uh, this was actually a somewhat Bishop. okay uh, pay per view. Uh, so, without further ado, let's do our review of Elimination Chamber, which took place in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Uh, uh, literally no, no, a no, week. No, 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 no. Yes, it. Oh no! Oh. Whoa, 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 wait. Then why did it take place? Oh, it took no. I I'm I gotta say Montreal. Okay. <laughs> Montreal, the province de Quebec. Okay, that they took place in <laughs> there, uh, literally a no. week ago on the 18th of February 2023. Um, now we have the first match, the women's elimination chamber match. Liv Morgan versus Oscar versus Raquel Rodriguez versus Carmella still employed versus Natalia versus Nikki Cross. Uh, Oscar enters first, followed by Carmella who's still employed, followed by Raquel Rodriguez who I actually liked in this match, uh, followed by Nikki Cross, then Natalia who got a big pop because she's a Canadian, and then lastly Liv Morgan. 
they started the match. Uh, it was, who was it? It was Liv Morgan and um, Natalia starting out. I didn't write that down. I should have. Uh, Natalia does an arm drag, uh, puts Liv in a side headlock, does a shoulder tackle. They do simultaneous pin attempts. Um, a Liv Morgan repeatedly slams Natalia against the chamber. Double foot stomp off the chamber. They slammed each other against Nikki Cross's pod. One more time. One more time from the fans. Um, and then Natalia slams Liv Morgan against the chamber, which was quite brutal. Um, then Raquel, enter Raquel Rodriguez. Um, she goes off on Natalia. She did a nice clothesline, did a people slam through live across the ring uh she shot nat natalie natalie natalia off into live morgan splash in the corner throws natalia across the ring uh did a fall away slam on live morgan did a big boot to natalia uh put her in a fireman's carry um slammed um she went back and Slammed her against the chamber. That's what she did. Natalia sunset flip Raquel, and then um, and um, Natalia. Oh, who, what? I think I meant live. Uh, simultaneously into the chamber. Uh, Natalia uh, did a neck breaker, and then Liv did a code breaker combo for a two count. Nikki Cross comes out of a pod. She goes off on everybody. Um, she sent everybody to the outside. She catapulted Liv into the pod. Um, repeatedly slammed Natalia into the chamber. Choked Raquel against the chamber. Climbed up on top of Carmella's pod. Did a cross body onto everybody. They all laid down selling. Uh, they replayed that spot. And then Carmella, who's still employed, came out of the pod. Uh, she tried to pin the other women. Uh, she hid in her pod. Raquel slammed Nikki into Carmella's pod. They replayed that spot. Then Carmella goes to hide in another pod. Raquel eliminates Nikki. Uh, Liv Morgan hits a code red. They replayed uh, Raquel's elimination. Um... Is she silently eliminated Nikki Cross because something else happened? Can't remember what. Um, Raquel slammed Nat into the corner. Meanwhile, Liv Morgan was climbing on Oscar's pod and she did a sunset power bomb on Raquel Rodriguez, which was cool. Then Carmella got a near fall. Then Oscar comes out. She beat up Carmella and then the people sh chanted. Oscar's gonna kill you. Um, then she does a German with a release on Carmella. Uh, Raquel did a shoulder tackle on Oscar. Oscar put on put in the modified octopus stretch. Liv Morgan did a missile drop kick on Oscar. Did a code breaker on Natalia. Natalia did a sharpshooter on Liv. Uh, no rope break, so uh, she's just there. Um, Oscar put in the armbar, and then they both eliminated Liv Morgan. Natalia did a sharpshooter on Oscar, then Carmella broke it up, and she eliminated Natalia. And I was like, no god dang way, she just beat Natalia from Carmella. Uh, whatever, man. Um, then First of all, Car Carmella, get the fuck off my TV. Expeditiously. Get off TV. Carmel. Goodbye. And then? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. That's it. <laughs> then why did you say first of all? <laughs> oh, the reason why I said first of all is because Carmella should have not been in the final two of the Elimination Chamber match. That's why I said first of all. Number two. Why wasn't... Um, I wasn't Piper Niven in this match. Mm. That was my question. Yeah. I feel like Piper Niven could have benefited a lot from being in this match rather yeah. than um, 
rather than like you know Carmella because all of a sudden we got to give Carmella a fucking push. First of all, Piper Niven is the biggest woman on the fucking roster, and y'all don't even have her in the Elimination Chamber. What? Ridiculous. <laughs> okay <laughs> then. Um, what was I saying? Then Raquel gets a barrage from of kicks from Oscar and Carmella. They both eliminated Raquel. Um, they do pin attempts, uh, Oscar lock for the win. Uh, and I said there, Oscar should have been a bit more dominant than she was. And now we have Oscar versus Bianca Belair at WrestleMania for the Raw Women's title. And hopefully she beats Bianca Belair. Um, and yeah, I gave wrestling a seven. And Logic a 7. What did you think about this match, Ben? Oh, um, yeah. I thought this was a... a this was a, a smartly laid out kind of match. This was... Uh, this I, I, I thought this match flowed relatively well for a women's elimination chamber match. And the funny thing is, no one dominated. I mean, Asuka had like, what, three eliminations in this match? If I'm not mistaken, I think. Well, I'm not too sure. It, I know it was not Carmella. I think she had like one elimination. That was it. But um, anyway, uh, I thought this was a good match. I gave this a six and a half. And Logic, I probably probably six. That's the best I can give for this match. I mean, was this match a good match? I wouldn't say no, but uh, I thought it was solid. I thought it was okay. Um, I didn't think anything about it. And Asuka was the right winner in this match by leaps and bounds, because Raquel is on SmackDown, Nikki Cross is doing nothing on Monday Night Raw, she's fighting Candice fucking LeRae, who's still employed as well, and then, all of a sudden, she has the um, nerve to, you know, like, Nikki Cross and Candice LeRae are feuding for absolutely no reason. What the fuck are they fighting over? Chips Ahoy cookies? Hot, hot Cheetos? What are they fighting over? Pasta? Alfredo sauce? Give me a fucking break. What the fuck are they fighting over? Who cares? But that's another story for another time but anyway um oscar was the right winner and i thought this was fine go ahead Chad. okay uh, <laughs> uh well um nikki cross just, just to answer that quickly uh the storyline that they're telling right now as far as i'm aware is that uh, she's lonely and she doesn't have any friends so she's stalking, um, I forgot her name, uh, Candice, so, so, so she's stalking Candice to try and uh, become her friend, uh, which I, I don't think is going to work because stalking never really works out the way that the stalker no, thinks it would. No, think, no, what? no, no. Uh, yeah, she needs to rethink that, that one too. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> Especially I, with... This Alexa Bliss stalker. That was the yeah. dumbest. This, by the way, the way you described that, Josh, that the way you just described that, you just you just made it sound like the worst storyline in the women's division all year. Is that bad? I didn't even. Let me explain to you how. How? Let me explain to you how Monday Night Raw. Uh, okay. Well, let me explain to you how Raw is right. Monday Night Raw, the first hour and a half, it's okay. And then it got what? And then it got horrible. Oh, I don't know why Monday Night Raw gets worse all of a sudden. Hey, yeah. You want your dad? All right, well, guys, I do have to, uh, I do have to go. But um, yes, I thought this was fine. Uh, I thought this was a good show, oh, and uh, I'll introduce the awards. Uh, yeah, I do got to go. Oh, but anyway, Josh, you can talk about the rest of the show. Okay, yeah, uh, bye. Yeah, well, right, I guess we'll see you later. Well, um, you know, I guess we'll just, um, yeah, we'll be back soon. Uh, this is not over, so just hang in there. All right, we are back. Um, sorry about that. Uh, ben had to leave on short notice. He, well, not short notice. 
he did tell us that he may have to leave um but yeah uh, he's gone now uh and um he will be back on the next episode uh where we will possibly review um uh new japan uh battle in the valley uh that's that has a uh, mercedes monet on it um formerly known as sasha banks uh versus Kyrie sane uh so um yeah we'll we'll probably go and watch that and yeah um let's continue on with uh elimination chamber uh, and now we have a Ronda Rousey package uh I doubt anybody cares about that and to the second match which is the third match between Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar um we started the match Brock gets first blood he throws Lashley over the top rope Royal Rumble style they fight on the outside they get back in the ring Bobby Lashley does a spear for a two count does another one uh Brock does an F5 for a two count the people chant one more time one more time and then uh he gives the fans what they want and gives Bobby Lashley another F5 um Brock gets a near fall uh they replayed that second F5 then Bobby does a third spear um people chant Bobby who and uh Bobby puts in the hurt lock uh Brock Brock breaks it with a low blow and Bobby wins by DQ um Brock Lesnar F5 the ref and yeah that was the match I gave wrestling a 7 and logic a 7 what did you think about this match Josh well um I'll get back around to this now. First off, the women's chamber, as I got cut off earlier because oh, of Ben's. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't. I, uh, I didn't ask you. No, about it's fine. That. It's fine. It's fine. I'll quickly get back around to it. It's fine. Okay. All right. The women's elimination chamber. Uh, Asuka was the correct winner. There was no other winner in that match. Had anybody else won? I would be uh, quite irritated right now, but um, she did win, so I'm all right right now with the result of it. All right. Um, I will also quickly say uh, it, that it is, as far as I'm concerned, the best women's elimination chamber in company history up to this point. Damn. So that's uh, quite the achievement on their behalf. Okay. Um, I would rate it maybe a 7.5 towards an 8 out of 10 oh, in terms shit. of the match quality. And uh, in terms of logic, maybe a 6.5 towards 7 out of 10. Okay. That's so, yeah, that's probably a, yes, that probably comes as a surprise, but yeah. there we go. And uh, as for Brock and yeah, so as for Brock and Bobby, which you've just covered, yeah. um, I don't appreciate the direction this is going in. I haven't appreciated it in a while. I don't understand the meaning for why this match even had to happen. I don't understand what the cause of the rivalry is up to this point. It's very confusing. It hasn't been explained very well. Um, now, as for who won, I don't give a figure of a flower pot. That didn't make any sense, that, that, that sentence. Uh, anyway, um, what is this leading to? Like... This should have had a a a um, an actual conclusion, a definitive ending. Like Brock wins or Bobby wins, but this, with the DQ and the low blow, which is very bizarre for Brock to be doing 
for him to resort to such uh, tactics like that. It's very rare that we ever see him do something like like that. Um, I appreciate that he sold. That that was the only way to escape the uh, full Nelson or the um, hurt lock, as, as he likes to call it now. <laughs> I I appreciate that someone on Brock's caliber had to use a low blow to escape. That was a nice touch, but because this isn't really leading to anything worthwhile, I don't care about the result. Uh, this match shouldn't have happened at all and if it was supposed to happen then just save it for Wrestlemania like is this leading to another match between them a- apparently Bray Wyatt wants to get involved now which what? is absolutely ridiculous because on the Smackdown before this Bray Wyatt made a challenge to whoever was going to win this match at, uh, I believe, WrestleMania or sometime around then. So. Uh, wow. Why? Why? Bro, why? And then, just to make it worse, on Raw, two days after this pay-per-view, Omos made a challenge to go oh, one-on-one against Brock Lesnar. Oh. So are you telling me, are you honestly telling us, the audience, that the entire match of Brock versus Bobby at the Chamber was just to build up a match for almost to go up against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? Because MVP said in the uh, backstage promo um, that uh, he wants Omos to basically get vengeance for uh, Bobby uh, to go up against Brock. I might just. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, damn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we, we are definitely gonna skip those matches. Fuck off if you think I'm gonna watch that. Um... But yeah, um, match ratings uh, Brock versus Bobby, I'll give a zero uh, for both. <laughs> oh. Zero quality, zero logic. <laughs> Damn. Like, it, there, there was no logic going into it. There's no logic going out of it. And they just had the same match style of okay, hit finisher, hit finisher, hit finisher, hit finisher. Like fucking stop it. Put on a wrestling match, not a finishing match. Oh. I'm sick of this. Fucking style of wrestling these days. Okay. Oh, well. Damn, Josh just gave this match a zero rating. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, uh, then uh, we get a WrestleMania vi- vignette. Uh, I think it was of yes. Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. Um, um,. <laughs> Seth Rollins dressed as his 2019 self. Absolute clown. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. But he was actually portraying the Joker from the yeah, Batman. I know, I but, know. I was about to say but, that. Yeah, but um, what I found to be very cringe is Becky Lynch doing I am the man. I am the man. Like, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Seth Rollins was dressing up as uh, the Joker or his 2019 self, who's an absolute clown. Um, then he was dancing along the steps like in the movie. And then uh, Becky Lynch comes in and she's like, uh, I forgot what she said. Um, they had some type of argument, and I am the man. And uh, bad Becky, uh, like I don't even know. Well, whatever. That was that segment. Um, and apparently, she has a man cave. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That that too. Uh, <laughs> what and. Seth Rollins like, we have a man cave? 
it just completely broke kayfabe, but whatever. Um, anyways, you uh, want to talk about kayfabe right now? <laughs> I guess that's a <laughs> that's a rant for another time. Maybe we should make an episode where you rant about um um uh, 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 uh kayfabe. Moving on, moving um, on. Anyways, we get a um WWE 2K23 spot, which I don't know if Josh will buy or not. He might, he just might get it. I will be, I'll be buying it on the day it gets released. Okay. And then... Because I'm an idiot, that's why. Yeah, I guess the game's gonna be mid. And speaking of mid, we have a mixed tag team match between Edge and Beth Phoenix versus Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. Edge and Finn Balor start the match, Finn does a shoulder tackle... Edge throws some punches in the corner. Beth makes a tag. Does a double team on Finn Balor. Rhea Ripley is automatically tagged in as um, Beth Phoenix is tagging. Because women have to wrestle women and men have to wrestle men. Um, Rhea puts in a collar and elbow tie. Tie up. Uh, they clothesline each other with no effect. Um, Dominic is there. And they chanted, fuck you Dominic. And... <laughs> Apparently Ben hates Dominic. All of a sudden, just hates Dominic. Um, and yeah, um, they locked up. Uh, Rhea Ripley did a low blow. Uh, Beth knocked down Rhea. Rhea Ripley left the ring. They fight on the outside. Beth shot Rhea Ripley into the steel steps. They got back in the ring. Uh, Beth Phoenix knocked Finn Balor down. She climbed up to the top turnbuckle. Uh, and Dominic came and caused her to lose the balance. Rhea Ripley put Beth into the tree, tree of woe and repeatedly kicked her. They replay. Uh, oh, and when uh, Dom did his stunt, uh, Edge chased him out of the arena. And then they replayed that thing of Edge chasing arena. The fans were singing. I don't know what they were singing. Um... The people chanted, fuck you, Dominic, again. Um, the crowd kind of hijacked the match. Um, and I was like, this match is just full of BS. And I can't concentrate on it. The fans are hijacking it. And like, my gosh. Uh, then uh, Beth was apparently on her own. Uh, she did a superplex. Edge made a hot tag. Uh, he finished with a flapjack. Uh, Beth and Edge simultaneously locked in the education. Um, Rhea Ripley knocked out Edge with brass knuckles. Beth uh, Phoenix powerbombed Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley powerbombed Edge. They did that simultaneously. Edge and Beth Phoenix hit FTR Shadow Machine on Finn Balor for the win. Uh, And then uh, my biggest problem with this match, Rhea Ripley lost while she challenged Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania, which she needs to win. Retribution for three years ago. Wrestling 5, Logic, as a matter of fact, 2. I was going to give it a 3, but now I'm giving it a 2. This was full of bullshit and uh, Rhea Ripley lost. Um, What did you think about this match, Josh? Uh, as far as my opinion goes on this, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Rhea Ripley should have won. Uh, there is no doubt about it. She was the only one who should have won this match. Um, you can't have the winner of the Rumble losing on the way to WrestleMania. Yeah, she it, won the it Rumble doesn't make as any well, sense. and then they beat her in the... Uh, and Judgment Day loses again uh, on a pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, and how yeah, many times? Which... They need to fix this. They lost that Survi- They lost that Clash of the Castle. They lost that Survivor Series, and they lose here. They lost twice that Survivor Series. Yeah. 
Um, a few episodes ago, I made a rant about them losing like 80% of the time. And then I had to check that and I got proven wrong big time on that. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, uh, go fuck myself. They win on um, Raw, but they win nothing on pay per view. Basically, that's how it goes for the most part, yes. Uh, but Edge won this match because he needed to get the win to 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 show he... Uh, I... Fuck knows. Um, yeah, look. Um, this is leading to Finn Balor against Edge at WrestleMania again, which Finn Balor has to win! Yeah. It has to, break. otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Oh, and 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 hopefully, Finn can do a surprise demon paint job for his entrance at WrestleMania. Hopefully, uh, and you know, squash Edge in like thirty seconds or less. Uh, <laughs> I think that'll be a big moment. Yeah, um, that's, I, that's really just nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's but, not going to uh, be yeah. as special as it was when he used to do it. No, no, so, because uh, um, Roman Reigns Extreme Rules 2021. He beat the Demon Finn Balor. No, no fucking problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then. Uh, the, did, uh, wait, did he beat uh, Fiend Bray Wyatt um, in 2019? Was that SummerSlam, I think? I think he lost. He lost, and I uh, think he was the demon that time. No, just regular, normal Finn Balor. Uh, well, whatever. Uh, I, I'm not interested in seeing um, Demon Finn Balor again. And speaking of... Uh, well, I, I'm not either... But I would rather him, like, bring that out for, like, one time only just to, like, dominate Edge and send a clear message that, uh, you know, it's Finn's time now. So, you know, yeah. just, you know. Uh, and yes, he doesn't need, and yes, he doesn't need to put on the face paint to send that message. I understand that, but uh, I don't know. Anyway. And speaking of things I wasn't really interested in, um, you know, because of certain people that were in it, oh, uh, yeah, and uh, for the United States Championship in the Elimination oh. Chamber, Austin Theory, the champion, versus Montez Ford versus Bronson Reed versus Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano versus Seth Rollins. And I saw why is Montez Ford in this? I, I I don't mind him. I think he's a decent wrestler, but I mind the fact that he's a tag team wrestler, challenging for a singles belt. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna read you all the notes for this. Um, Johnny Gargano and Seth Rollins started the match. They locked up. They duck and dodge. Numerous pin attempts. Johnny Gargano speared Seth Rollins through the ropes to the outside of the ring. Austin Theory came out of his pod. Uh, he beat up uh, Seth Rollins and Johnny Gargano did a backbreaker on Seth Rollins. Um, Johnny Gargano and Seth Rollins punched Theory. Seth slapped Theory in the back of, on his back, which was quite nasty. Theory tried to team up with Johnny Gargano. They brought back. They made a reference to the way that was such a stupid group. I hated them. I couldn't stand them. Uh, yeah. Um, Johnny Gargano drops him, and then Theory hides in his pod. Uh, then Theory got beaten up in his pod, and enter Damien Priest. Uh, he beat everyone up and by that point not that i don't like damon priest i think he's a great wrestler uh but uh, by that point i just wasn't interested in this match and yeah uh, logan paul interfered and austin theory won 
and whatever uh yeah since i didn't i give this zero rating because i didn't finish it and i don't care what did you think about this match josh okay uh then you might be surprised about what i'm about to say okay <laughs> Um, just like the women's chamber match you do on, I rated quite highly, which is very surprising considering my track record of uh, match ratings. Um, I would rate this a, around a 6.5 or maybe a 7 out of 10 uh, for the match quality, but in terms of logic, I don't know, may, maybe a 4 at, at most. Um, should Austin Theory have won this? It depends if he's facing John Cena at WrestleMania or not, which is the r- rumored match to be happening. Um, and if that does happen, then Austin Theory has to win. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, you know, because Cena should put him over. Um, you know, that is the that that is the way that it should go. Oh, it's just a terrible pun. Uh, that that should go. Um, yeah, uh, I thought this match was yeah like a six point five or maybe a seven out of ten in terms of uh, in ring wrestling quality. It it had a few spots that I liked, like like the her off the top off the off the top of the pod. Um, Montez did that dive like a Spider Man off the off the top. The uh, yeah. roof. Um, yeah, there were a few memorable spots in this match that I'll rem- remember in a few years from now. So that's good. That that is a good sign of a um, good el- elimination chamber. If you can remember certain spots, then then that's you know good. Um, but yeah, uh, I didn't really think that this should have happened at all anyway to begin with. Um, if any championship should have been defended, um, either Roman should have been defending, or uh, you know Gunther in um, should have defended his intercontinental intercontinental championship, because it would have made a lot more sense for Gunther, um, formerly known as as Walter, by the way. Um, it would have been, it, I'm speaking too fast. It would have made a lot more sense to have Gunther defend his intercontinental championship in the chamber to prove his dominance as he's already done over the past year, six, seven or eight months or so than it would to have Austin Theory who is trying to hide from everybody to compete in the chamber to defend his, cha- his uh, U- US championship. Like what? It should be the other way around. Not, not... Yeah. Gunther didn't even defend the Intercontinental Championship on this pay-per-view at all. Yeah. <sighs> in, in, instead, he divided it on SmackDown against Mad Cat Moss of all fucking people. What the? Oh, come on. I, I, I bet it was a decent match, but really? Well, it happened. <sighs> yeah. and, now, and now, and now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now Ben has just sh- sh- sent me. A message, um, and he said for okay. uh, Bobby versus Brock, he gave it a no fucking rating in his words. <laughs> Thumbs down. <laughs> and then he, uh, so yeah, that's another zero rating for that match. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, knock knock. Who's there? Bobby. Bobby, Bobby who? who? Exactly. Yeah, yes. and, then, and, then, and, then, and then on Raw, this one day, I heard it on the roundup that Ben did. Bobby Lashley cut a pro, uh, Brock, Brock Lesnar cut a promo, and then he, about he, how he can't get Bobby Lashley out of his head. When oh, he's, yeah. <laughs> I will go to bed with my wife. Four or five hours later, <laughs> and I'm still thinking about Bobby Lashley. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so Brock Lesnar has sex with his wife for four to five hours. I don't know. I don't know where that stamina is coming from. And then he and then he thinks about Bobby Lashley. Oh, 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 oh. Why would you make that connection? Wouldn't it apply that you're, like, cheating on your wife with freaking Bobby Lashley if you think about him while you're having relations? <laughs> Why would you bring that up on national television? <laughs> oh. Because he wanted to uh, make a point that no matter what he does in life, Bobby Lashley is always on his mind. There I was, on the toilet, taking a shit, and all I could think about was Bobby Lashley. Uh, all right, enough about that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, now for the main event. Yes. For the WWE... Undisputed Universal Championship. Roman Reigns, the champion, versus Sami Zayn. Roman Reigns comes out first, followed by Sami Zayn, who gets a huge pop. Uh, they start the match. They stared down for like, what, two to five minutes. It was like, just get on with it, the match already. It felt a lot longer. Like, yeah. Jesus. <coughs> Uh, the people are chanting, ole, 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 like Manchester United fans or something. Um, uh, people trying to, fuck you, Roman. And then they uh, locked up uh, Sammy and Roman. Roman put in, uh, by the way, I was I was watching uh, a, a video of Tyrone Magnus. He was reacting to Bruce ah. Blitz. <laughs> he was reacting to Bruce Blitz talking shit about Roman Reigns and John Cena, and yeah, I just thought about that when I was watching my match. Oh. I'll, I'll sit down and watch a ro uh, wrestling match, and I still can't get Bruce Blitz talking shit about Roman Reigns about my head, out of my head. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Roman Reigns put in a side headlock. Uh, he did a shoulder tackle. He taunted Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn put in his own side headlock. Roman Reigns did a high elbow. Uh, he taunted. Uh, he did fuck you Roman chants again from the crowd. Roman put in another side headlock. Uh, Sami Zayn did a rumble style uh, shoot off over the top rope. <laughs> Um, they got back in the ring. Uh, Sami Zayn did some punches in the corner, did an avalanche elbow for a two count. Roman Reigns threw a right hand. They replayed that spot. They f fought on the outside. Roman Reigns did a drive by. People trying to, let's go, Sami. Oh, that kind of scared me. Uh, and yeah, there's uh, Mitsubishi. Pajero behind you, or whatever it's called. Um, Sami Zayn uh, threw a chop to Roman for no effect. Roman Reigns dropped him and taunted. Uh, people chanted, Roman sucks. Roman sucks. Um, Sami Zayn tried to fight back. Roman Reigns beat him up. Uh, he talked shit to his wife. Uh, threw Sami Zayn on the outside. He talked more shit to his wife, then talked shit to his dad, uh, and then they got back in the ring. Sami Zayn threw some punches. Roman Reigns dropped him, and then Sami Zayn hit a lariat, which was nice. Um, did a crossbody, then a clothesline over the top rope. Um, Sami Zayn beat up Roman Reigns at ringside. He kissed wife, and the people popped. Got back in the ring. Uh, then Sami Zayn did a sunset powerbomb for a near fall. 
They replayed that spot. The people chant Sammy, Sammy. Um, Roman Reigns hit a Uranagi for a two count. They replayed that spot. Roman Reigns went for the Superman punch, but Sammy countered with the uh, exploding to the corner. Um, uh, he was in the position for the hell of a kick. Sami Zayn went for it, but then um, Roman Reigns hit the Superman punch for a two count. They replayed Sami Zayn's exploder and then uh, Roman Reigns Superman punch. Or no, yeah, um, Roman Reigns went for a spear and missed. Sami Zayn rolled him up for a two count. Uh, he did an exploder into the corner. Um, he mocked Roman Reigns, did his, um, and then uh, did the Superman punch, and then a hell of a kick for a near fall, which was nice. They replayed that spot. They had a fight on the outside. Uh, they got back in the ring. Sami Zayn hit a blue thunder bomb for a near fall. They replayed that spot. Sami Zayn is in disbelief. Roman Reigns was laying selling. Uh, they did a ref bump. Uh, uh, Roman Reigns did back elbows to Sami Zayn and then uh, it simultaneously hit the referee. Then he fell out. Uh, Sami Zayn did a hell of a kick but there's no referee to count. Jimmy Uso came in and gave Sami Zayn a super kick party. Then he hit a Uso splash. Um, he put Roman Reigns arm over Sami Zayn uh, and then the new ref came in. Uh, and then counted a near fall. They both laid down selling. Then they did a one-two. Uh, Roman Reigns headbutted Sami Zayn. Did a spear for a near fall. And uh, out here I was like, the near falls are getting a bit repetitive. Um, uh, they replayed that spot. And then um, they did another ref bump. Uh, they exchanged Superman punches. They laid down selling. Uh, and then this spot kind of made rounds on social media. Paul Heyman. Um, no, 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 no. Before that, Paul Heyman gave Roman Reigns a cheer. Then Jey Uso appeared. He stared down with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns gave him the chair to hit Sammy with it. Then Jay hesitated. Then... Roman Reigns paraded him, pushed him about the head. What's wrong with you, man? Hit him. Just hit him. Um, uh, and then Sami Zayn accidentally speared Jey Uso. Then Roman Reigns beat up Sami Zayn with the chair. Uh, he had a spear, but there was no ref to count. Uh, one comes and counts to three, and Roman Reigns retained. Um, Kevin Owens came up and beat Roman Reigns and Jim Uso. Paul Heyman tried to hit KO. Um, he did. And then um, Kevin Owens stunned him. That was kind of funny. That made the rounds on social media. Uh, the people chanting, Ole, 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 Ole. And then Sami Zayn hit a hell of a kick. And then uh, Elimination Chamber went off the air. I get, I'll give wrestling a six. And logic is seven. Uh, before I give your thoughts, um, Ben want me. Ben wanted me to tell you guys his thoughts uh, while he's out. Um, and then uh, <coughs> he said, "Add him. Add in his thoughts." I don't know where he said that. I'll go and find it now. But he did say that apparently people were thinking that um, Jey Uso would turn heel. Turn heel back with, uh, I don't know who would think that. Uh, apparently, people think that. Uh, I find that hard to believe. Um, but anyways, um, I'd have to go back now, cause that was all the way back earlier this this week. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, um, he didn't say much about the match, but he did say uh, about Jey Uso apparently 
who was going to turn heel. Uh, he said it's been two months since Jay even became closer with Sammy. It was ridiculous. Oh, because we got to have heat on Jay Uso? Where the flying fuck would that go? My answer, no fucking way on earth. I swear I'm so sick of people trying to force things, especially force um, an unnecessary, unwarranted, uncalled for heel turn. Why can't the heel turn become natural like it was supposed to be? Jey Uso was getting cheered on SmackDown. Why? Because people care about this man. And now at this exact moment on the C-level pay-per-view, you wanted Jay to turn his back on Sammy and realign himself back with Roman. That would have made the Royal Rumble segment worthless. Waste of time in that if that happens. I wouldn't have mind if Sammy won, but again, how could we how would we do Sammy versus Cody at Mania without Roman? I don't think that would have been possible. Um Yeah, that was his thoughts on uh this whole situation. Uh, I agree with him on the Sammy the Sammy thing. Even though it's not really realistically something that could happen. Because uh, I, I didn't think that Jey Uso was going to turn heel. There was no way. I, that wasn't even a thought that came into my mind. I thought that he was going to take the chair and hit Roman. He was fi- fixing to, but he didn't. Uh, but yeah, now, uh, Josh, would you like to add your thoughts? Yeah, <laughs> I can do. Yeah, um, I mentioned at the Royal Rumble review that the closing segment, which I gave as close to five stars as I could possibly get, uh, I mentioned that um, that entire segment would um, depend on how it would be preceded going forward. And uh, so far it's been a roller coaster of a journey. Um, I'll just say this uh, because I'm struggling here. Um, I I don't know why. Uh, I know. I understand why this match had to happen now. Because Cody Rhodes was already scheduled and booked to go up against Roman at WrestleMania because he won the Royal Rumble match. And Triple H isn't going to change plans all of a sudden because Triple H strikes me as someone who will make a plan and stick to it um, as was evidenced mostly and in how he booked NXT a, a few years ago um, I look I, I understand that uh, this match had to happen now otherwise it wouldn't have happened at all in Montreal especially because that's where Sami Zayn is, is uh, from or or around that area, he's uh, from anyway, uh, in Canada. Um, but uh, to me, I saw this as bad timing. Um, Co- Cody Rhodes came back from his injury, which to me was too soon. But uh, if he's fine to go, then he's fine to go, whatever. Um, so yeah, this match to me is bad timing that is the entire sentence around it bad timing um because sammy should should have won but he couldn't because he can't have roman lose prior to wrestlemania because that would be the wrong time hence bad timing um and you can't have him lose on a pay-per-view that shouldn't have even happened at all and uh, Sami Zayn, if he if he was going to get his moment, which he should have got, then uh, WrestleMania would have been a lot more appropriate and a more grand scale of a pay-per-view to have that happen, really. 
um, you know, to close out that story, finish the story. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Cody, that was a five-star promo if I've ever heard one. My, my God, when I heard that promo, I was like, yes, do this, you can win this, yes, I believe in you. And then I thought, ah, it's happening at the chamber, so he's not going to win, is he? No, he's not. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Sammy should have won, but he didn't because of, of, uh... Bad timing. We, yeah, basically. And also, apparently, they don't see Sami Zayn as a main company guy, which is fucking ridiculous. But, um, yeah, so apparently, Sami wasn't going to become champion anyway, which I find to be ridiculous. But I'm not the one booking, am I? No, otherwise things would be completely different uh, <laughs> in uh, so many ways. Um, yeah, look, as I mentioned before... Um, in the Rumble review more specifically, this this entire Bloodline storyline at this point is all about Jey Uso and him wanting to uh, get re- revenge on Roman Reigns based on what happened a few years ago uh, when he was forced to join him, you know, when the Bloodline got started. With Paul Heyman and uh, Jimmy Uso, and you know when Jay had to fight his way to try and defend his right to not join the dark side. <laughs> uh, but then Roman basically mind wiped him to join him, and so he did. And uh, Sami Zayn over the past few months has. Uh, being the guiding light, so to speak, to show the light back to um, Jay. And Jay now is starting to come forward and basically showing signs of wanting to break apart from the bloodline and, uh, you know, do what he should have done to begin with, in a way, and uh, pick Roma's ass and, uh, you know, get his... and get his vengeance. Which, by the way, if that isn't where this is leading to, then what the fuck is this all about? Um, Because, Sammy... um, And also, the other reason that Sammy wasn't going to win this is because he never really wanted the championship. He just wanted to take down Roman in specific. Um, He he just wanted to... um, Basically, help Jay see the light and uh, and be the crack of the foundation to uh, you know set them apart um, or worlds apart, as his theme song I believe is is called. Um, yeah, I'm rambling like a rabbit here. Um, yeah, basically, Sammy wasn't going to win, even though he should have won. But because it was happening now, it's bad timing. Um, now, what happens at WrestleMania? Everybody is thinking Jay and his brother Jimmy against Kevin and, and uh, Sammy in a tag team match for these uh, tag titles. And I'm hoping that isn't what happens, but I can see that probably being the case, and I'm just going to be very disappointed because uh, why the heck would Jay also want to fight? Uh, no, sorry. <clears throat> Not not fight. That isn't what, what what they're doing. Why would Jay want to wrestle against Sami Zayn when he doesn't really have any reason to? In fact, Jay would be more aligned with Sami Zayn than against him at this point. Um, which is the entire story that they are telling here, or at least should, or at the very least should be telling here. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, if that tag match does happen, then that would be a failure, and I would rate this entire storyline over the past three years a zero out of ten. I I will rate everything that Roman's done a zero out of ten. I will give <laughs> this entire company a zero out of ten if that is what happens. And also, you know what? You know what? 
I don't want Cody to be the one to beat Roman Reigns. I don't. I want Cody to be the champion, but I don't want him to be the one to end Roman's reign over the past two and a half years. That's been built up to now. No. Uh, Cody just isn't the right guy to me to be the one to be the guy to end the reign. Um, even though he has earned it because he, you know, he won the Rumble. He beat Cody Rhodes like three times in a row last year, which was pathetic, but whatever. Uh, Vince was booking it at the time. Um, yeah, um, I'm actually in favour of Roman leaving as the champion at WrestleMania now, especially since I I believe Sami will be added to make it a triple threat. How I would do it at this point, but um, even though I don't want a triple threat, because I'm sick and tired of having triple threats at WrestleMania, I just want a singles match. But I don't like the singles match that they already have because it should be Sami Zayn at WrestleMania against Roman, but alas, that isn't the case. And apparently, I'm tiring Chapo out, so I'm just going to end it here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I just kept rambling on and on. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I thought this was a decent pay per view. Um, <coughs> though it's had it had its problems, and we will see you. Um, yeah, um, I liked both chamber matches in specific. Um, I rate them at like a seven each, or maybe like a eight for the women's, or maybe, oh, maybe an eight for the men's as well. I don't know, but yeah, um. I thought the chamber matches were the best matches on this entire uh, pay-per-view, um, which is good because that is what the entire pay-per-view is about, is the Limitless Chamber. So it's a good thing that the Limitless Chamber is the highlight. So, I mean, that's a success in its own right, right? So, um, yeah. Um, I'm hoping this is the last ever Limitless Chamber-themed pay-per-view. I'm hoping... That the gimmick pay-per-view now comes to an end and the chamber just becomes a match that happens when it needs to and not because it's an annual thing that has to happen at the given point in time that it's uh, set to happen. Um, if you get my point there, Habo. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, but at this rate... Um uh, I I I don't think it would be likely that they abolish these types of pay-per-views. Would be good, but it's not likely. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Rope Break. We will be back next week. Uh, ben and I. Uh, I don't know if Josh is interested in New Japan. No. Uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll review um, Battle in the Valley. Um, hopefully if I can get all the notes down and, um, and yeah. Although, uh, although I will say, as I'm interrupting again, I'm an, I'm, I'm an absolute asshole. Um, I will say that I am very pleased to see, um, uh, Mercedes, Mercedes, yes. Mercedes Benz, the car, no. Um, Mercedes Monet um, having her career resurgence. I am very pleased to see it. Um, and also, she's now making history by helping to build up and develop the, um, I think it's stardom or whatever uh, that she's a part of now in the New Japan division, I think. Yeah. I think it's stardom, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's helping now to uh, build that up and raise the um, presti- the prestige of that company there. So, um, hopefully that can rise up and um, and be taken uh, and be taken a bit more seriously because it's always good to see um, women's wrestling be taken seriously. Um, especially now in in this uh, generation, 
and the generations that are, are you know to come um any time that women uh get a chance to shine in whatever it is that that they do is a good is a good thing um because it's always good to be uh seen as equals uh no matter what it is that it that is being done you know um so yeah um I, I I'm I'm not pleased though that she's the champion immediately because I don't know how she earned it. <laughs> um, hopefully you can explain that uh, when you do the review. But um, yeah, uh, I am happy to see her re- resurgence, but her coming back and immediately becoming champion on on like her first match back, I believe, is a bit uh, debatable. I will say that, um, but it is nice to see her back and doing the thing that she loves to do. And uh, apparently the match was very good, so even I might have to see this match for myself, to, you know, to uh, you know, to to see if it's as good as it's claimed to be, really. So mm. Mm. I'll uh, think about it. But yeah, um, I won't be on the review, but I will try and see the, this match in, in specific um, sometime soon. Um, I'm now going to edit Certified Bangers episode 70, I believe, and it yeah. will be uploaded at the correct time this time. Yes. Because last week uh, I was... Um, very neglectful i would say uh and uh yeah uh, i apologize but uh this will be done in time uh, so especially because there's no there's no news this week so <laughs> that's gonna save a lot of time unfortunately so. there is news this week this coming week Yes, but not now. Yeah. You know, it, 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 yeah, so it's fine. It's it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, anyways, and if it and <laughs> if it isn't on time, then some sort of punishment should be given to me, one way or the other. Mm. Um, like like maybe I'll have to watch like something I hate and do a review about it or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> But, no, but I know ideas. because I know it will be on time, so uh, oh, I won't have to do that. So mm. yeah, I think I know a perfect thing to punish you to watch. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you when it happens. Um, Anyway, it's going to be on time, so I'm not going to have to do that. So, okay, let's see. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And on behalf of the main host of the mysteries of life and everything else, uh, a guest host on Life's Opening Radio Certified Bangers, uh, the assistant host of life's opening radio rope break and my good friend ben charles uh this is carbonator and josh jenkins signing out